Well, uh, I have uh, really, I think, taken up a Herculean task, the quote unquote Herculean task to uh, sort of talk about something which is, uh, which I say the, you know, uh, uh, a top to bottom approach, you know, for long, uh, which is, you know, that uh, the upper caste mess of, uh, you know, the Bengali Bhadra looks. Uh, I'll come back to that. And how the invisibilization of uh, Ambedkarite discourse, you know, happened in in in, in Bengal. So um, I'll I'll just get into that. But much before that, let me sort of tell you that, uh, you know, uh, Bengal for long has been sort of you know promoted or sort of presented uh, in the in the pop. Popular imaginations as uh, something like a, as I call it, a holy site of exceptional land. You know, uh, you know, there are lots of semantics, there are lots of normativities, there are lots of epistemological groundings are being laid. You know, by uh, by the academicians, quote unquote, the mostly uh, so far the you know uh, uh, come from the dominant castes. Uh, so. And that has portrayed uh, Bengal uh, through a, uh, you know, uh, through a, through a, let's say, Savarna gauge. So, and, and uh, you know, it, you have n number of readings where you will get to know that how uh, the Bengali lower caste communities, uh, those are predominant communities, uh, you know, you know, in, in terms of number, of course, not caste wise, uh, not the hegemony wise, like the Namasudras, like the Rajbongsis, uh, the coach Rajbongsis, like the Pondos of Trios. So, you know, we, we, we know in greater details that what is their condition, what has happened to them, whether it's in Marijampi, whether it's in, uh, in, in, in other institutional and non institutional spaces. Uh, but then, uh, my endeavor in this talk, you know, would be to sort of uh, look at the forces, you know, those actually, uh, you know, perpetuate this, uh, this, this alienation or trauma or let's say humiliation, you know, in, in, in the Dalit Adivasi lives of Bengal. And, and they are the what I call the much talked about, uh, much written about uh, category of Bhadra looks, uh, which is basically let's not uh, you know confuse this word with only with you know blanket gentleman you know or you know gentleman kind of person as a Bhadra look. Well, as the uh, you know as as its meaning goes, it's of course Bhadra look means gentleman. But then it is basically an upper caste category, you know. Uh, the the Vadra looks are not mm, not like you know mm, any you know th there is a caste which is associated with it. So it's not really a blanket uh, uh, you know uh, category where you can say that Vadra looks are you know it's 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 uh, you know uh, are normal categories. <clears throat> so uh, so. And, and this is a very important category. I'll just try to keep this category, you know, in the, uh, at the core of this discussion. Okay. And we'll, we'll get into this whole discourse that how invisibilization of, you know, Ambedkarite discourse, you know, has happened, how it has been invisibilized. So, so, so broadly that how, uh, you know, the, this, these categories are being, uh, you know, th this category, let's say Bhadralok category is being espoused, you know, as, as I wrote very recently as a caste blind category, which it is not. Uh, it is actually a mm, uh, caste based category. So how this particular category, and of course, there is another category, which is, for, for example, the upper caste women, which we say, for example, the, the Bhadra Mohilas, you know, so, so this, this, these are the kind of categories which I will try to sort of, you know, 
uh, sort of lay bare that, that how these categories basically perpetuate, uh, you know, the myths of uh, of 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 the normative claims, like you know, or the epistemological claims of uh, exceptionalism, you know, with regard to uh, Bengal, uh, West Bengal. So. Hmm, and 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 the very upper caste maze of of this of this uh, you know categories okay so uh, so so uh, let me sort of begin with uh, with this uh, you know I'll, I'll rather uh, begin by flagging you know mm, the histories those are being written so far and these are histories all you know you know you would find that uh, histories on the dalits of of bengal uh, are are basically you know it it, it ponders over uh, or it 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 looks through the lens of of you know the caste identity not through the anti caste lens you know which is what basically my uh, sort of you know uh, confrontation with those kind of uh, uh, epistemological uh, articulation, let's say, you know, that, you know, you, you, you take up any understanding, you know, those are being, uh, those are, those are in the public domain in the forms of uh, publications and the historiographies of the Dalits of Bengal. Uh, what you would find is that the identities identity of Dalits, you know, are, are being so, it is being shown as if uh, Dalits are fighting, uh, you know, um, you know, through the narrow uh, perspectives of their identity, but it is basically to, uh, to, 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 to break the, the, the shackles of, you know, uh, casteism, you know, which is, which is one of the important fact, you know, now, uh, very few of us, probably, since this is a very informed group of people, so, but very few of us largely know that uh, this is the state where which sent, uh, which, which got, let's say, Dr. Ambedkar elected to the Constituent Assembly. So, so he went to the Constituent Assembly uh, from, from Bengal. And the, uh, the architect to, to make this thing happen was uh, Mr. Jogendranath Mondal, who is popularly known as Mahapran Jogendranath Mondal. Uh, so, Mr. Mondal was the one who, you know, who, uh, who was in a way uh, the, the torch bearer of, you know, Ambedkar, I think, in, 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 in Bengal. So, he was even, even some in the Ambedkarite circles uh, call him that he is the uh, his 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 the the Ambedkar of Bengal. So 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 the, so that kind of connotation uh, connotation is there. But uh, uh, but 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 Mr. Mondol has uh, uh, has has uh, has uh, has other stories. And you know why Mondol is a very important factor. And I'm trying to sort of stress on Mr. Mondol is this that. Uh, uh, Mondol is somebody who was, on the one hand, uh, fighting with uh, with the casteist forces of Bengal, uh, let's say Hindu Mahasava. Uh, even even he was fighting with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with with he he was not really agreeing with other nationalist forces, the the non Hindu Mahasava kind of or non quote unquote nationalist uh, uh, forces of bengal but then there were uh, and and this man was part of you know, almost all the cabinets uh, in in in, ben in the pre colonial bengal or pre independence bengal but then then things turned out in 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 in, in such ways that he left uh, india and he joined as the first uh, uh, you know, uh, the first cabinet of uh, Mr. Jinnah. Uh, so, I mean, he went with the Jinnah's version and then uh, he became the first law and labor minister of Pakistan. But then he came back by accusing the Pakistani government of Liaquat Ali that, uh, you know, they are not doing justice to the 
to the minorities, especially the civil caste. The minorities means the Hindu minorities. But then he says that as the Muslim League had promised that they would be taking care of the uh, the the civil castes of uh, you know uh, civil castes interest, but that is not happening. So he came back and then. Uh, he sent a long letter to Liaquat Ali Khan and then he resigned. But then <clears throat> this is of course one, you know, and then he, he had a uh, mysterious death in, in Bengal. He came back to Bengal and then tried to sort of uh, once again uh, uh, fight for the, uh, the, the, the Namasudra refugees or, you know, the, the larger civil caste or the Dalit interests. But then, of course, he got uh, he, he he those narratives did not gain traction, and uh, the the Congress government in Bengal then they did not much, uh, you know, they, they did not want to give much space to to Mr. Mandal, and then most M Mr. Mandal had a, you know, he 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 he, he had a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, he had a mysterious death, and of course, uh, very very unfortunate. So. But then uh, this is sort of, you know, the, the, this is one aspect, but then there's another aspect where, uh, uh, you know, um, there is a lot of talk today around uh, Mathuas, those are the erstwhile Namasudras, you know, I mean, of course, uh, those are erstwhile Chandals, now Namasudras, so uh, uh, the, the Mathua religion, of course, uh, the Mathua sect, which is uh, being uh, the you know being sort of uh, promulgated by mm, Harichand Thakur and Guru Chand Thakur, so his son. So and and which is against uh, you know the the Brahminical uh, you know or or priestly, which is which was basically uh, opposed to the the ritualistic priestly you know religious uh, uh, you know practices. So it was much more egalitarian in nature. So it was kind of, as they say, Vaisnavite, you know, uh, religious, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, practices. So, uh, but uh, and and I, uh, there's one thing that I forgot to say that Mr. Mandol, in the pre-colonial time, he was the one who, you know, was trying to sort of articulate. A, a very very fragile, uh, you know, uh, force which is Dalit Muslim uh, unity. So and and he was trying to sort of, uh, you know, foreground that in the in the broader picture of the politics. So and here comes uh, Mathuas, the Harichand Guru Chand, uh, 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 you know, uh, Harichand Thakur who comes up with this and then this is basically a uh, uh, the vision was basically to create a anti brahminical uh, uh, you know egalitarian social order as i call it so 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 that is one but then uh, you know uh, but but there has been uh, you know a lot of epistemological or let's say seman you know semantic mechanism that is being you know, deployed by uh, by the scholars to sort of you know uh, hide uh, the the you know uh, the, the narratives of or the or the or the struggles of the Bengali Dalit communities, and and which is why um, you know it is being popularized uh, uh, the, as that this is a this is all identity struggle. So now. Uh, let me now sort of you know get into this this whole uh, 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 you know narrative of uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, epistemological uh, patronage you know which is being uh, created by 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 the Bhadralogs, you know. So uh, today, for example, in Bengal, if I can sort of bring in a bit of contemporariness in the whole discussion, uh, you know, Bhadralog as a as a as a as a as a category is being espoused as I have been trying to you know sort of uh, uh, you know uh, 
uh, advance it that it is being you know it it has always been a uh, hierarchical category uh, a kind of caste category okay so what has happened is this that uh, in 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 bengal uh, you know there has never been you know intersectional you know uh, sort of uh, uh, narratives are never being uh, given a space the intersectional narratives of caste basically when i say intersectional so uh, the bengali society has never been um, interrogated you know uh, through the lens of caste and always it sort of try to profile the uh, you know the dalit communities but then this is this is again one one thing but then let me let me sort of uh, talk a bit about uh, uh, you know bengali exceptionalism uh, you know the the myth making uh, which has you know the the myth let's say which has uh, which has been uh, you know uh, which has been foregrounded by by let's say the the, the savarna you know uh, the savarnas broadly so this entire you know myth that bengal is a very very exceptional land is is you know it 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 has basically been promoted through that bengal is 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 casteless bengal is progressive and uh, bengal uh you know there is no caste violence in bengal uh, so Beng there's there's everything that is good on earth that is bengal so something you know largely that kind of picture is being uh, portrayed about bengal so now uh this and 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 it is being largely promoted as a very very egalitarian you know uh, uh, progressive land but then uh, and but what has really happened that these kind of exceptional categories like progressiveness like exceptionalism are being created to as i call it to camouflage you know the caste of the of the upper caste bengalis the upper caste bhadraloks and bhadramohilas okay so <clears throat> basically and 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 they have a caste so 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 to camouflage their caste and their caste hegemony uh, they you know uh, they they sort of espouse this categories now and and that is why you know they would like to say that uh, in bengal there is not there's this there's not much uh, you know caste based violence but then which is of course not true in 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 bengal you have if if we look at the history but thanks to the savarna historians and and others that we do not talk about it much okay so 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 uh, so thanks to them and you would know that in bengal uh, during the left regime there was marijhapi massacre where you know lots of these dalit refugees they were killed murdered women were raped uh, so that story never came up, which is basically a you know uh, to to uh, 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 probably uh, the the biggest massacre of the of the Dalits in the uh, in the post independent period, uh, and also you know in, in there there have been a, 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 a mid to mill uh, controversy in Bengal uh, uh, where it came up so much so that uh, you know the the upper caste uh, uh, upper caste you know so the upper caste you know uh, 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 families in various districts they were refusing to uh, to allow their 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 children to eat the food that is cooked by the uh, dalits okay and this happened in bengal the 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 infamous uh, mid day meal uh, controversy uh, um, which was very very widely reported but then there has it is not being exposed so uh, you know as a, a very very heinous uh, caste you know uh, crime so but so you would know that during the pandemic in uttar pradesh there was this thing happening where uh, the lower caste cooks were cooking, and this uh, the upper caste uh, 
uh, you know, folks in the isolation wars, they refuse. So, so Bengal is very, very exceptional. This happened much before in Bengal and it is happening in UP. I'm not trying to compare UP and Bengal, but Bengal is really, really uh, things in terms of that much earlier, you know, so, so, so Bengal is, is, uh, you know, what Bengal thinks as uh, Gokhale said that uh, today others think tomorrow. So Bengal, Bengal thinks such uh, uh, such things much earlier. So uh, so such was the caste penetration, the caste based thinking. I'm uh, I'll get into the academia world and other things, but then let me sort of complete this. That uh, mm, uh, and what is this uh, this Bhadralo category that that is uh, the, the the upper caste category, which is Bhadralo category, how they really sort of perpetuate violence, which is again, uh, basically, which goes very, very unnoticed in the mainstream academic circles or mainstream discussions. And I have, uh, during the pandemic, written uh, uh, an article in the Quint where I said that this is Bhadralo politeness which perpetuates violence and this happened uh, uh, during uh, you know when one of my colleague uh, from the history department adivasi colleague uh, very very accomplished uh, so uh, uh, so 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 that uh, you know so when she was being harassed online and trolled for her adivasi identity so there was not much of a hue and cry in Bengal in terms of that how caste is the society is, you know. But there was of course a huge hue and cry that you know that uh, that why this is happening in uh, this 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 is happening. So it was very very downplayed, very much downplayed, and and then uh, which was basically a, 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 a out and out caste uh, uh, caste based you know violence perpetuated online you know so and 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 see the the harasser who basically uh, you know harassed for her for the caste of uh, dr meruna uh, is reminded that uh, i'm politely reminding you that you are a santal santal of course are adivasis of india Adivasis are, are very. Uh, I mean, uh, they they have a huge. They, you know, they are they are, they are huge in numbers in Bengal. So, uh, and she said that the harasser, the 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 young girl said that I am politely reminding you that you are a santal. So you do not, you should not really say much. Uh, you know, or should not lecture as much. So, and I I actually picked up from there, and this has been my experience. Uh, let's say lived experience in the. Mm, being at the center of the Bengali Academia, which is Jadavpur uh, University, so there you have very very polite, you know, way of dealing with uh, with the issues, and this is what and and uh, this is this actually I sort of try to put uh, by by taking a cue from uh, you know uh, Surya Kanduvagmore's work on Hindu to uh, Hindu polite. So Hindu politeness, of course, as you know, uh, as you, some of you have read, that he has uh, he has done a huge work in Marathwara region, and then he said that in the in the uh, in the you know urban in the rural spaces there has been a uh, there has been a peace which is a rural peace, but then that peace is sort of mm, uh, is 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 through Hindu politeness, and it is it is very politely. You know they are trying to sort of behave they are trying to sort of look very very civil so they are trying to project their civility you know the upper caste civilities which is basically incivility so as uh, you know as a very very polite you know kind of uh, uh, form but then uh, and but then that also perpetuates violence so i sort of have had drawn uh, uh, you know uh, my uh, understanding from there and called Bhadraloks as uh, the Bhadraloks way of perpetuating violence uh, in a very progressive way as uh, through through the category of Bhadralok politeness. And Bhadralok politeness, of course, is, is very politely reminding you your place. 
that uh, you know uh, that you you come from a category you come from the reserve category uh, you know the, so all sorts of discrimination are uh, are being perpetuated uh, in the academic circles in the institutional circles in the urban areas uh, you know I, so, uh, and and uh, it it is done so much so that uh, that the, the the this myth that uh, uh, that Bengal is a is a is an exceptional land where Dalit Sadivasis all have got their due is being busted by uh, uh, by this uh, 2001 and then 2011 uh, census uh, where we have found that uh, 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 only five you know how. The, the Dalits and Adivasis are being invisibilized uh, from the urban centers of Kolkata or urban centers of various districts, and they are being pushed to the to the rural centers. Okay, uh, as the data goes, that there is only five point six percent. You know, the Dalits are living in Kolkata, which is a very very progressive, joy of us land. You know, and only six zero point two eight percent Adivasis live in uh, in in Kolkata, where, whereas then their actual population share is 24, 23 percent, and then five point eight percent respectively. But then this is this is what the exceptionalism you know did. So and and this is what I call the upper casteness of uh, you know of of the. Bengali Bhadra Loks or Bengali Bhadra Mohilas, which is of course the upper caste, Bengali Bhadra Loks and Bhadra Mohilas, and uh, so so uh, so they have they have what they have done is that uh, you know uh, they have ca camouflaged uh, uh, the caste hegemony uh, through uh, you know uh, through through this kind of uh, through 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 a polite way, uh, you know. Uh, so and uh, you know those of you have uh, have read professor partha chatterjee's you know uh, uh, you know work you will know that professor partha chatterjee himself uh, said that uh, in bengal in bengal uh, the caste hegemony is so complete uh, you know so but then that is not the end you know so where professor partha chatterjee has ended i begin from there and say that you know, it has not only ended the 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 Savarna hegemony in Bengal, but then uh, 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 but then uh, you know uh, uh, this hegemonic structure is being sort of reproduced over and over again in Bengal in in, in various through through various discourses, you know uh, through uh, you know through uh, very very polite discourses of Tagore, uh, Subhas Chandra Bose, and you know, uh, and 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 of course uh, Vivekananda. So so basically, you know, uh, you know, as uh, you know, Dr. Ambedkar had said that uh, uh, democracy in India is only a top dressing, you know. Uh, on an Indian soil, which is essentially undemocratic. So, uh, and I really, you know, sort of, and, and and this is so true in the case of Bengal, as far as as much as it is true in other parts of for for the country as as a whole. But uh, and and I say that progressiveness or exceptionalism is is basically a top dressing. Okay, in 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 in, in Bengal. So, or on Bengali soil, on 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 our soil, which is basically very very undemocratic, and uh, and I I take it further and say that it's very very casteist as well. So this this whole progressiveness and you know uh, uh, and uh, uh, exceptionalism is basically a top dressing. Okay, so uh, Bengal basically have three uh, dominant caste categories. Uh, Brahmins, uh, you know, uh, Kaistas and Bhutas, those basically dominate every kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, institutional and non-institutional spheres. Okay, basically the the uh, 
uh, you know the uh, the the uh, their caste hegemony basically you know roars it's it's roaring hegemony everywhere so and 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 it's it's everywhere they are there but then uh, you know when i say that uh, uh, bhadralokas uh, as people say that uh, largely in the mainstream that bhadralokas do not have a caste so but uh, you know but then you know you you take of any popular article or op-ed you know bhadralokas are being espoused as a class category okay basically that is to because i mean let me sort of tell tell you this that uh, a bengali society or bengali you know bengal as a whole is being get kept by by bengali upper caste the kaistas the brahmins and and baitas so you there are very very few people they would really understand the nuances of bengali society that how bengali society is basically structured okay so 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 that is how it is being get get and that is why i have seen uh, there are uh, professors and other popular uh, academicians try to write in in this ongoing on uh, you know on on bengal uh, uh, during this ongoing assembly election and and they really sort of you know uh, in a, they they have they have explained bengal in a in a very benign way okay which is basically not the case so including uh, uh, professor mehta so 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 my point is this that uh, uh, and 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 credit goes to the upper caste bhadra loks and bhadra mohilas that they are everywhere you know in in across the world and uh, you know get keep the knowledge the knowledge production and and they have this epistemological patronage so you you cannot really break it's very very difficult to break that cycle so uh, so so uh, this this uh, and for long bengal was basically you know it was propagated that bengal is a party society you know uh, this of course again uh, uh, there's uh, professor doi payan and partho others they they said that bengal is a party society again that is being propagated as a as a as a, as a very very uh, you know uh, i mean in a, in a very very uh, shrewd way which basically bengal was never so uh, 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 bengal was never a party society in in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very recent piece i said that bengal is basically a caste society okay as opposed to as it is being propagated as bengal is a party society there were in every aspect of the society party is deeply penetrated but what i said is that it is the caste which is basically penetrated so again party society so this is how the you know this entire epistemological semantic business uh, is you know sort of let's say narratives are being created there to 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 camouflage caste as i call it so uh, uh in fact you know today you would be knowing you would be seeing that in bengal there is a lot of talk about that who can make sonar bangla you know a golden bengal whether it's you know uh, the you know the 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 right wing parties or the centrist parties or the left wing parties the left is not talking about sonar bangla but left remains even today uh, uh, caste blind and which is why left has declined that they have never really understood the simple fact that dr ambedkar said much much earlier that uh, in bengal uh, uh, in in india or in the in an indian sort of case it is not really always uh, there is division of labors but there is division among the laborers so this simple fact is not being understood and that ensured their decline and so they never uh, for long even in, you would be knowing that when bundle commission report came up and there was a huge uh, hue and cry uh, among the sovereigners it was jati basu basu who was the uh, chief minister then in bengal and he said that we do not have caste in bengal uh, you know so we do not accept that so but then thanks to one of the minister in the left uh, his uh, ashok mitra he said that the reality of the caste is uh, in in bengal is as much as in the case of rest of india 
so and this this man is is a very very tall figure in 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 bengali politics asok mitra and he says this so but then the the left's popular narrative never accepted this that you know uh, uh the society is basically a, you know has a you know the 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 indian society is basically built on the on on the on the caste based hierarchies so so this is this is one again uh, aspect and uh, but then let me sort of uh, take you to another uh, you know uh, important uh, sort of point uh, or sort of flag it off that is that uh, bengal in in the case of bengal uh, you know uh, uh, the 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 polite narratives are being built you know uh, you would know uh, rabindranath tagore's universalism you know his idea of nationalism where he is telling everyone to keep the he head held high and things like that mm -hmm. so so mr so so mr in the case of mr tagore uh, you know uh, i was going through his works uh, you know uh, writings of uh, tagore and then uh, all of a sudden discovered that he is he 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 does not go much against uh, uh, you know the 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 hierarchy the caste based hierarchy or varna so he rather is uh, telling uh, that uh, rather tellingly telling that uh, you know this is to be preserved okay uh, and there is there's there's an article in uh, by tapan bose De delhi university professor so he also wrote uh, in, in greater details uh, about uh, how uh, you know tagore's writings have cast so historically and tagore's family this entire tagore family you know this the the quote unquote the bhadralok family so this uh, bhadralok's camouflaging of caste or their upper casteness to preserve their upper casteness has a historical root okay and and uh, you know uh, whether it's tagore whether it's bankim chandra you know and and others take any name so you know they all have never gone against the uh, in fact vivekananda so it is trying to pro you know uh, you know sort of propagate a civil hinduism a civil face of uh, hinduism so but then what what really it has done is that it has uh, you know uh, these narratives are being mainstreamed so much so that uh, uh, the tall social reformers from the lower caste communities you know are being um, uh, sort of their uh, 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 you know a challenge to the to to the hegemony of the upper caste bengalis are uh, have never come to the fore uh, which is what you know uh, so uh, in 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 the case of uh, if you look at the academic writings on uh, on this bengali icons so there have the, it is it is it is basically uh, you know there is less of historiographies and more of hagiographies so you wouldn't be so they are being created as semi gods and demi gods not really as some kind of uh, you know they are not being looked put through the interrogations you know so so this is the, and and this is all being done to 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 sort of preserve Mm, uh, the upper casteness of of the of the you know uh, bengali bhadralos uh, right so mm, uh, but then uh, if i can bring in the if uh, since i have last 10 15 minutes probably uh, okay 5 minutes so uh, mm, uh, now let me just very quickly make two three points that uh, in bengal uh there is uh, you know uh, it it is being uh, advanced that uh, you know bengal is largely a basically uh, you know uh, is a, is a cultural society but then the culture and religion is being blended in such ways uh, in the case of uh, you know bengal that even the religious you know the the uh, uh, you know festivals are being articulated as uh, you know uh, as as something like a, a cultural phenomenon you know you, you you look at 
you you take up any uh, religion the durga puja and other so even a atheist also flaunts that we can go to these pujas and and things like that but then uh, largely the, the the point that i'm trying to make here is this that uh, 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 it, there there has been a uh, uh, there has been a uh, you know uh, normative ploy that is being sort of deployed you know uh, uh, historically in the in 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 in, in sort of uh, advancing uh, the the narratives of the upper caste bengalis and that actually those narratives largely uh, you know uh, uh, panders to the upper caste sensibilities but it also at the same time camouflage caste of the you know bhadralokas and uh, you know upper caste bhadralokas okay i end here and uh, let me sort of if there are questions and comments let, will i'll sort of i'd like to take that up Thank you so much, Professor. It was such an insightful and great talk. Like, like whatever I understand from your talk is like you cover every aspect of Bengali society from we can understand that how the caste system is working in Bengal. Like I am from Rajasthan, so for me it's very new and very informative also to understand the different aspects of Bengali society from historical perspective to current perspective. But I would. Like I would prefer ask questions later, and might be the audience member they can ask first. So if anyone have the, any questions, either they can put in the chat box or they can unmute themselves. Like yeah, hello, so. hello. I am. I I have a question, Deepika. I have to just over it. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, sir, uh, I am from West Bengal, so sir, and I am I am studying in the East and and anywhere any academic spaces and everywhere the caste back is following in this i have i have gone through the discrimination but sir uh, my question is that is very important question you are looking that any type of bahujan movement or bahujan movement in the political spaces of west bengal any chance of happening of this uh, what is your point of view uh, I also attend your last uh, conference with the, with the Suraj Yengre. Have a time. Unfortunately, not ask the question, but here I get the chance. What What your point of view that uh, the Bahujan movement? Uh, you are. What is your point of view that any uh, type of Bahujan movement? The chance of happening a Bahujan movement in West Bengal, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I think this question even uh, largely relates to what Prasant uh, has asked. Prasant says that looking at the current situation in West Bengal, what could be a possibility to revive uh, Ambedkarite consciousness? Is there a possibility that Dalits and other oppressed group, group can be united? Well, this is this is again a very, very difficult question. I mean, from my kind of uh, location, it's, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to sort of, I can of course suggest some pathways, but then I'll just tell you something that how, uh, and I I do not see that this is uh, in a in a very very uh, this is not coming up very soon in a very very unified way uh, and and not anytime soon. Why I say this that uh, uh, this you know this whole phenomena of bhadralok politeness is so strong that you know whenever there is some kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, movement, or there's some kind of formation, so some kind of Dalit assertion or Adivasi assertion, they will just immediately grab that and appropriate you. I'll give you a very, very, very recent example. Uh, what happened in Bengal? In Bengal, you would know that very recently, Mamata Banerjee has uh, set up a Dalit Sahitya Academy, which is, of course, a very, very brilliant thing. But then, uh, uh, and he she made uh, 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 a very very uh, iconic uh, you know man called Manoranjan Bapari as its chairman. But then what happened immediately after that? We see that when Mamta Banerjee was uh, announcing her candidate list for legislative assembly election, she fielded Manoranjan Bapari in this legislative election. So so try to look at this you know this this. Uh, I think Bisal was asking Savarna ploy. <laughs> so I'll come back to Bisal's point, but Savarna ploy, how they really appropriate you. So 
so this uh, this this man was chair is chairperson of saita academy and then uh, this man has uh, 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 is being fielded so and why this man is being fielded you know this and this is this is completely this is how it is you know and you would see that this man was asserting dalit identity and this man had you know had had huge appeal in terms of that you know that the, you know in terms of articulating dalit life the traumatized dalit life the humiliation of you know of dalits uh, in in bengali society so 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 this man is being picked up and very very you know all of a sudden he is being grabbed so but then on the other hand you would see that there are uh, dalits you know dalit professors dalit students and in fact uh, our, our friend camellia uh, has, has done a brilliant has been doing a brilliant research in sundarbans where more than 140 families are being whose uh, you know uh, houses are being sort of raged you know demolished for in the name of widening of roads you know when they resist resisted so they are being uh, so they are being threatened uh, by the same you know ruling tmc government so which is again very problematic so you do not really want to empower the marginalized community what you want is a kind of a tokenism so a political tokenism as i as as we you know as as it is being largely called so and and c keeps on flaunting that uh, for example like other hindutva parties that we have done so much we have huge love for uh, dalits and adivasis of bengal for matuas for others but i i say that you do not need to have political love or electoral love you know uh, just before the election but you should sort of mainstream the narratives of for example matua which is um, uh, the matua religion or or matua tradition which is anti brahminical tradition or 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 for example mr mondal uh, mahapran jogendrad mondal's um, ideas or in fact dr ambedkar so this man dr ambedkar is the man who went to constituent assembly uh, by getting elected from bengal and he is not being celebrated here so he is being celebrated just by giving a holiday on things like that but then if you look at the syllabus uh, or you know the the pedagogy of uh, the pedagogical uh, uh, you know uh, 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 aspects so this entire discourse of the margin is being completely invisibilized and that is being done uh, and so so what is being done in in bengal is mere tokenism in the name of uh you know uh the community or promoting one face or other face you know so so these basically this does what this this helps uh the the you know the the upper caste bengali commun bengali political leaders or social leaders or civil society to so sort of to 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 show the world that we have some kind of representation while you do not really uh, you know uh, so so that basically you know holds you not doing much to democratize the society or to 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 bring some kind of egalitarian narrative because once the egalitarian narratives are being uh, you know taught or it's being talked about or it's being sort of put into the pedagogical discourses what will happen that it will go really from the bottom to the top and that can create uh, uh, yes so i'll just give me one minute uh, 30 seconds so that actually uh, uh, helps uh, you know you, that is not being done by the savarna formations of various kinds in bengal to to ensure that there is no ambedkarite consciousness in bengal but then thanks uh, to 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 the upwardly mobile uh you know uh, urban centric uh, you know uh, uh you know dalits and adivasis that they are they are you know they are they are ensuring in social media in other platforms uh, that uh, ambedkar discourse or the broader dalit bahujan adivasi muslim discourse pasmanda discourses are to be mainstreamed so and and this is one of the reason why you know there is 
so much in this election talk about caste and you know matuas and namosudras you know to appropriate so and and this is again a very very dangerous ploy that this appropriation basically kills the independent agency of the marginalized communities Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Nasir. Mm, we I... have a question uh, from our um, faculty member from HSS, and I think there's another question which is similar to that. Uh, uh, professor, uh, his Professor Nishan Choksi. Professor Choksi asked that Bengal seems to be unique in that cultural, economic capital seems to be concentrated in one city that is Kolkata, with in which upper caste have hegemony. So, do you think more autonomous institution building in the provinces, where caste profiles are more diverse and conscious, challenging of the Kolkata-based academic social network, may help challenge uh, Bengali exceptionalism and promote anti-caste consciousness? Well, uh, that's again. Uh, I mean, so basically, it is uh, the. Uh, 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 it is the uh, you know one of the thing that mamata banerji ha- has done is that she has established universities in the name of uh, before the name of a uh, mm, uh, lot of dalit adivasi icons like panchanan varma another anti caste icon i didn't get time to uh, to and she promised that she will come up with harichand guru chandi university mm, so these all are in districts okay uh, but then uh, this uh, you know the the kolkata centric uh, you know uh, let's say savarna hegemony or 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 upper caste um, academic hegemony is so strong that uh, they you know uh, most of this if you if you look at the faculty uh, combination in those uh, uh, districts uh, you know based universities the universities in the districts of bengal Uh, those are basically far off from kolkata uh, uh, so they are uh, you know in fact they are much more orientalized you know in terms of uh, their research they are thinking i i keep on visiting uh, you know for seminars and other you know as as members invited person in 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 those universities and they seem to be uh, not much interested on uh, you know uh, on sort of on on one hand to bring up the local narratives the local lived experiences of the adivasis or 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 the lower caste communities you know but uh, but uh, you know but it is rather in in kolkata this this polite categories of bhadralogs they are busy in camouflaging caste so it is i i do not really know whether the government should come up with the autonomous institutions more and more those will have those will be basically endowed with doing focused research on dalits and adivasis but then uh, uh, of course as i said that whatever government does of course since these parties are basically uh, they have a caste the party leaders have a caste so it 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 basically uh you know is is not going to do so what i think that it has to be something like a, a community's own the it it has to be this upwardly mobile or you know some of these urban uh, uh, you know dalits and adivasis they should rather uh, come up with with this kind with 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 the research those are those will be challenging the brahmanical hegemony or the savarna hegemony or the bhadralok hegemony or the or expose the politeness as a you know as a as a casteist category so it it it's 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 they those can bring consciousness those can talk about jogendranath mondol and others because basically in bengal as i call it you know it it may sound bit uh, uh, i mean it's 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 basically something that uh, that is of course also true where a uh, lot of bengali upper caste you know families they have uh, you know uh, uh, ramakrishnaite vivekananda vivekanandaite upbringing so they they really think that you know uh, this uh, this priestly religious cultures are basically something that is uh, you know that is that is the way of life 
you know so they at the very you know because you would know that in bengal this ramakrishna institutes and vivekananda oriented uh, you know they are kind of uh, ideological ideologically ideologically motivated schools from the from a very early age are are you know are penetrated in every districts and the rural centers so and they basically espouse you know you know this 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 priestly uh, religious cultures as something which is a very very natural phenomenon and that is why and and they give free education to the dalits and adivasis what they do is that from a very early age they sort of you know manipulate the consciousness of the dalit adivasi childs or kids and now you have of course the saraswati shishu vidya mandirs have come up which is basically rss ran institute so they are doing trying to basically hinduize so what is this is basically do great uh, uh, you know this is a this is a, again a very very dangerous phenomena that needs to be also debunked we have another question from jyoti vishas she asks could you kindly explain why there is no ambedkarite movement among rural based group of followers there is no ambedkarite movement uh, okay uh, uh, among the motuas yes i basically because of the paucity of time i could not uh bring that uh and this is very sad that matua tradition uh you know uh, had a huge anti brahmanical uh, history okay they 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 never believed in priestly culture you know or priestly religious uh, principles and that's how you know harichand thakur and and later on guru chand thakur they started but then what has happened that today if you see uh, uh the entire matua family is divided you know and before these uh, even guru chand thakur son and later on, the pr thakur and others later on boroma and now you know mamata bala thakur and then santanu thakur you know they are siding with uh, left and uh, sorry uh, right and center parties so in fact right of center party so uh, again this is what this is the trajectory of uh, you know uh, bengal's dalit adivasis that they are being appropriated and they are independent agency is being uh, you know is 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 being um, uh, in a way um, uh, 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 those instincts in a way are being uh, killed so uh, you would know that uh, today matua family is divided Uh, you know and and as far as ambedkar it concerns among them among that family today as you know it is nowhere it is nowhere in that family so it's basically individual centric individual driven you know so uh, you know you would know that with this nrcca uh, the passage of ca they had this concern or with the, this this whole nrc uh, bogey uh, that uh, this man uh, 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 this uh, that the right wing uh, you know nrc thing so and matuas again came up in a very big way against the hindutva parties and they protested a bit and they they had dissented but then of course these right wing parties they went in and they said that it is only for the muslims and not for the you know so not for the hindus okay so trying to hinduize Mm. So, so this is this is the case with the matua family it is politically being divided uh, and and this is the ploy that is that is how they are being appropriated jyoti is asking another question that mm, do you believe that right from the 19th century monopoly in printing press and publications created a brahmin yes yeah uh, this is this is very true that uh, uh, from the 19th century onwards there has been what has happened for example in maharashtra if you see there has been an ambedkarite public culture that is being created okay uh, you know or as we call the ambedkarite culture that is being created and there there were it, there were number of uh, you know printing press you know dr ambedkar himself he edited uh, pre, uh, uh, you know magazines and things uh, and that has somehow not happened much so it is from amrita bazar patrika and other so it is historically being uh controlled by the by the upper caste bengalis and of course the upper caste bengalis have sort of reproduce their uh, uh, their monopoly or their you know uh, caste capital uh, or their caste culture 
uh, through those uh, praise and publications. We have one question, uh, which is uh, saying that could you comment on caste representation in the films of Shantuji today, which projected as another figure of Bengali? Yes, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, this is a good question, and I remember a particular uh, backlash that I had. You would remember this man called Soumitro, probably Chatterjee, uh, again, uh, uh, quite a big uh, man in the film fraternity of Bengal. You know, when he died very recently, uh, of course, uh, there was a huge, of course, mourning going on and all that. But then I took a break and then I, I said that uh, uh, why Bengal celebrates uh, Soumitro Chatterjee? this is the man who you know i i really forget the name of that film probably some of you can remember including camellia but then i think uh, 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 there was a film which was you know basically uh, on an adivasi you know uh, a woman and uh, uh, which was basically directed by mr roy so so Sajid Rai was basically thinking that an Adivasi woman should be taken uh, as a as a as a Adivasi, you know, to as a, as a protagonist to for the, for that particular character. And when Somitra Chatterjee, of course, was the core protagonist, the sen the key protagonist of the film, and Somitra Chatterjee actually disagreed with that. That no, you do not need, uh, uh, you know, uh, Adivasi protagonist to to sort of portray an adivasi character so and and satyajit rai sort of gave in to that okay so so i i really do not know whether where to keep satyajit rai whether he is really exceptional in that sense ha 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 vishal said this uh, i think ha uh, oronne din ratri yeah yeah sahasika my student has said yeah so so this is the story so many of us do not know so one of the person who is uh, uh, who is in the cinema studies in uh, uh, you know see he was saying that this 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 has happened but but then uh, and very recently let me sort of tell you something uh, on a on a on a on a uh, you know on, on this note that uh, you would know that uh, uh, very recently, some of these Bengali artists have came up with a song against the Hindutva forces or the right wing forces, which basically says that Amra something like that, that I want to reside in this motherland. So my motherland needs to be protected from the Hindu to right. So things like that. And you know, some of us really protested against that that you all would like to of course you know some you know the, the famous bengali actors and actresses basically uh, you know uh, came up with that song against the right wing forces you know the the right wing jagannath that is there in in bengal right now so they said that amra that means we want to stay in this motherland or you know uh, by the way this entire motherland category is being espoused in bengal Again a, again, a, again, a kind of Hindu nationalist category. Many of us do not know, but that is what it is. Uh, uh, so this is as, as uh, and uh, so th th there was only one person who came up with the idea of enlightened India, that is Dr. Ambedkar with his idea of Prabuddha Bharat. Now, uh, uh, so these people said that we need to uh, uh, come up with the uh, so we we need to we want to stay back in this country and there these people are all the key you know key faces in that song and uh, uh, and and all the you know the mud or or all the all the all all the other kind of images those are being shown are basically you know they are basically from the marginalized background so it is being capitalized on them now the point is that this bunch of artists from the Savarna community of Bengal, they are saying that Amra of course they would like to stay because it is this country that has they have they have that, that has given them caste capital. They have given them social capital. They have it, it this country has given or this in fact Bengal, let's say Bengal has given them uh, political capital. So you know when they are sort of uh, flaunting that so whether it's right wing whether it's any other wing comes uh, in 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 tomorrow's 
politics or in uh, tomorrow, that's not going to hamper them much because they are the privileged. So, so this is how Bengali society is being narrated from film, uh, uh, you know, from the art forms to the political language to the academic uh, discourses. It is always a kind of savarna gauge, you know, savarna vadralok or bhadra mohila gauge. The that is the kind of lens that is being used, you know, to to camouflage their caste. We have another question by Sudhakar Ingole. What about the uh, cultural expression, especially from the community Dalits? Is there any attempt to form an anti caste dialogue that could probably mobilize the community on the ideological lines through, let's say, folk art or any other media? Well, uh, again, there are folk arts. Of course, if, for example, bowls, bowl songs and things, you know that they, they are basically from the from the Bahujan community. But then again, that is being uh, appropriated by the uh, by the Savarna. So that is why I say this Bhadralok politis, it basically creates so much epistemic violence uh, that, you know, you come up with any, uh, you know, uh, cultural expression, which is basically challenging Brahminical uh, or upper caste hegemony. So it will quickly grab that and will try to sort of, you know, rob you of your uh, expression. So uh, there has been attempts, for example, in, in Bengal, as I said, that what has happened is that the, the, the Bengals, you know, uh, the, the struggle for the you know, independent agency of the Dalits and Adivasis basically have, 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 have got ruptured or let's say got disrupted with this partition. And, you, you know, and, and there is a story behind it. When this partition was happening, uh, both this right and the, and the center, the Congress and the Hindu Mahasabha, they both agreed on it. And there was one person who basically uh, tried to resist. There was only and only one person that was Jogendranath Mondal. And he said that if partition happens, then Dalits and Adivasis, or especially the Dalits would be the biggest, you know, they would be losing the most. They would be losing out the most. So, uh, but then this has happened. Partition, ha partition has happened, and that is the crude reality. And then onwards, and that is why I say the post-independent India and in the post-colonial uh, Bengal or post-colonial, uh, you know, uh, in the post-colonial situation, uh, you, 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 the, the entire caste discourse, the entire. Uh, anti-curse discourse, let's say, you know, uh, to be precise, anti-curse discourse is being subs subsumed in the class analogies, you know. So, and further, it is being uh, camouflaged with with various epistemological cat categories, you know, of the Bhadra Loks. So, so whenever these cultural expressions are being, uh, you know, there are some cultural expressions even the Bhadralok's create in the name of Dalits, you know, when Rahid Bhamula uh, institutional murder happened and there was, there were a lot of, you know, street, uh, you know, uh, 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 protests and, you know, the street ba based, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you said, the, the you know, uh, kind of resistance, you know, art forms, those, those was displayed, but they never, and that was very, very performative, you know, and 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 this this is a bhadral of performativeness that they will never challenge or they will never talk about uh, their hegemony and um, which is you know every day there are lots of uh, rohit bhemulas you know happening but you know in in my own universities i have been fighting those uh, uh, cases where uh, you know how the the lower caste students in fact lower caste professors are being alienated excluded you know, uh, put through the humiliation, and but Bhadralok politeness is such that you know they will, you know, say anything on earth, but will not talk about their own caste privilege. Uh, there is another question from Sudhakar Ingole. Uh, surname stratification is the unique way of understanding caste-based identity in Bengal. Surname stratification means what, uh, Jyoti? Uh, uh, you are trying to say the kind of the, the model of Bihar uh, uh, that that you are trying to hint at. Uh, 
uh, certain stratification is unique way of understanding cause based uh, identity if you can explain it bit far bit more or if you can write it bit more that what you are trying to basically uh, okay yeah yeah okay yeah mukherjee versus mondal uh, so uh, yeah so uh, 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 the surname stratification, I do not think that uh, there are many those basically advance this whole idea that uh, if you come up with this, uh, you know, uh, this uh, blind surname categories, then it might help. But then it does not basically help it, it uh, you know, uh, the, the Savarnas basically, you know, they sort of get to know because see uh, uh, the Dalit pain and Dalit trauma uh, or their lived experiences are such that it basically reflects and that is the kind of uh, uh, you know so basically I think more than that what is basically important is at the same time uh, not only redistribution uh, but then representation uh, through empowerment representation through empowerment uh, you know, of the marginalized uh, communities is very, very important. Uh, I, I, I don't think the, uh, who's a Bengali then a Mukherjee or a Mongol in the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is again the, in the, in the, in this popular spaces of Bengal, like College Street, like Coffee House, like Jadavpur, like Presidency. So what happens is that, uh, 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 you know, a lot of these lower caste categories are being uh, projected as if, you know, they are, you know, through a very cliche stereotypes, as if they are not real Bengalis. The real Bengalis are the upper caste Bhadra Loks and Bhadra Mahilas, as I call them, you know, so, uh, and and others are basically as, uh, you know, even Bapari says the Chota Lok and things. But then uh, more than those categorization, I think that, uh, even you know this this whole thing that Mukherjee versus Mondol or you know the upper caste and lower caste. So what basically happens that uh, if you look at this uh, uh, art forms in Bengal uh, or film, uh, you know the, the Bengali films, uh, you will see that there is predominantly the protagonists are being sort of characterized around these uh, upper caste surnames. And that basically is a kind of maneuvering or manipulation, I say that, you know, of manipulating or robbing of uh, or sort of uh, the, uh, the existence of lower caste uh, identity. And but on the other hand, if you see in the case of Bengal, the uh, sorry, Bangladesh, in the Bangladeshi dramas and serials, you have protagonists in the name of Mondol, you know, and uh, 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 Mondal Babu, uh, Biswas Babu, and uh, and and others, and I have really not heard much of a uh, you know upper caste Bengali surname there. So it's it's uh, it's basically and and this is how they uh, in in the case of Bengal, it's all Banerjee Babu, Mukherjee Babu, Chatterjee Babu, uh, Das Gupta Babu, and things like that. So um, so this is again a kind of another uh, another uh, art based ploy. So, uh, 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 where, uh, you know, uh, you know, they sort of try to uh, seclude from the mainstream identification of, uh, of the lower caste categories. Okay. Uh, Dotona is asking that, um, would you please comment on the importance of the move to see OVC reservation status for the mice souls? And three other cars by both TMC and BJP in the context of the recent election. Okay, so uh, this this entire OBC reservation, I was on a national uh, channel uh, uh, debate. Of course, a right wing. Uh, so they were discussing OBC reservation on the day this discourse actually happened. The BJP president came here and talked talked about that you know Mahisos and Telis will be given reservation and. Others. And then immediately after that, uh, that, the TMC started talking about that we will be also giving them, we'll be also including them, them in, in OBC reservation. My problem with this kind of, uh, you know, 
electoral promises during this uh, you know uh, uh, especially during the election is basically again as i say that it's 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 basically mm, mm, again uh, a kind of politics of uh, you know uh, politics of gimmicks if i can call it put it that way where uh, on the one hand both these uh, governments whether it's a central or the state uh, you know as far as the obc reservation the existing obc reservation is concerned none of them have fulfilled uh, you know the seats for example in the academic institutions uh, of bengal or at the center or uh, or in in other institutional you know uh, institutes so obc reservation obc posts remain vacant okay and uh, and and today uh, sort of uh, on the one hand there is a there is a uh, there is a appeal for a uh, for a hindu vote bank and on the other hand you know uh, you know uh, so this is basically competitive politics to to really uh, you know uh, 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 you know sort of come back to power to to really uh, you know sort of uh, grab political power it's it has basically uh, it has got nothing to do with the empowerment of the backward communities as we call largely the dalit bahujan's empowerment or dalit bahujan you know dalit adivasi bahujan's empowerment it basically i i, I look at it as a uh, you know uh, a politics of electoral gimmicks can i ask can i ask as you discuss uh, uh, dr naskar about the obc uh, can i ask a question about the obc hello mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, it is very serious concern about the obc only 17% 10% reservation is given to the hindu obc and 7% is given to the muslim obc it is very serious concern about the obc reservation in our state dr naskar how you can look at this and what is the chance to getting the rights of the obc in our state it is very serious very serious situation as i looking uh, very serious condition well uh, yes uh, hmm, uh, just a Again, I forgot to uh, make that point. That will be a, that actually would have addressed your question when um, uh, Dothana was asking me this. Obis asking me to comment on uh, Obis reservation. It is Hindu Muslim thing. I, you know, uh, when the BJP president Nadda, uh, Mr. Nadda, came here and you know talked about including the Hindu Obis reservation, you know, including Hindu Obis here. So he said that why all the Muslims are being included. you know why less of the uh, 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 you know hindus are there my you know i actually had uh, you know sort of advised uh, in that uh, debate uh, on a channel on a national channel where i said that why does not nadda or 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 bjp government or uh, uh, here tmc government why do they not form a backward caste commission to sort of look look into the matter of their depravity or their backwardness so that you know we can on the basis of that report we can sort of you know come up with a solid ground to to give because we have on the one hand we have uh, sachar committee report uh, or rangrad mr committee report that says that muslim marginality in bengal is of course is is a reality but i am not denying on the, when i say this i am not denying the fact that uh, there is no hindu obcs are in a very very uh, you know they are, they are well off but there are there is there are concerns but the point is that why this you know uh, suddenness uh, just before the election why do you not really come up with a solid institutional framework to to really identify who are the backward cars those besides my because if you know the mahesh's history the 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 mahesh leaders like birendranath sasmal and others so they really never wanted to identify themselves as lower caste they said that we are upper caste so what about that you know so when somebody claims that we are upper caste so on what basis you give them reservation on the basis of economic depravity okay so that is one point you know you know if you if you look at it 
but then i basically advised or suggested that why the state government or the central government do not come up with a uh, with a fact finding committee by a retired judge where there has to be a uh, you know uh, obc stalwart up from a backward caste you know who let us investigate into this matter and come up with a report that what basically is what are the you know uh, what, what are those communities those can be con uh, you know can be included or inducted in the uh, obc reservation community and uh, 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 and what could be the ratio what could be the proportion uh, yeah, I think uh, we are almost nearing uh, end uh, to the talk. Uh, we can take one uh, last question. If anybody has any question, one last question. Uh, they can unmute themselves and ask the question if anybody wants to do so. Uh, sir, uh, my name is Suraj. Uh, I want to ask a question. Can I ask? Yes. Yes. Sir, uh, my doubt is like uh, uh, I don't have much uh, knowledge from I'm more, more of an engineering background, but uh, my doubt is how uh, like how uh, there can come a solution to this problem because everywhere uh, throughout the India, not only Bengal, we see a similar problem is persisting even after uh, like a very long time and uh, uh, and especially uh, even with the education system which has uh, which is teaching uh, uh, like uh, equality and secularism and everything but there is some other aspects also which are affecting the newer generations do you think uh, that there can be only a political solution to this or what changes can be made in education system, because even the uh, upper caste uh, uh, need to change their attitude if we uh, need a more uh, peaceful uh, unity among all uh, divisions. It's not only economical uh, upliftment, I guess. Uh, what, what do you think about these thoughts? I haven't. Uh got it uh camellia what was basically the question that uh i think uh what he was um, basically asking about uh, how to include the past studies as like Dalit studies he's asking, he's asking about, uh, how studies can participate in this teach um, uh, you know he's written about it quality teach about Dalit history so he's asking about, about how to include Dalit studies how to include Dalit studies in the uh, mainstream uh, 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 studies or, uh, or or syllabus things like that uh, like you are talking about uh, yeah. more unifying the Dalits and uh -huh. teaching, uh, spreading uh -huh. awareness. But uh -huh. uh, shouldn't the these studies go to the upper caste uh, generations, uh -huh. upper, uh, upper caste generations? Uh -huh. And is that a solution? Because uh, as you said that there is uh, upper caste politeness going on uh -huh. and it's more uh -huh. of a performance. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, there should also be genuine uh, uh, effort from uh, upper caste side and how we can bring that up like, should we include the Dalit studies and the um, yeah Amir yeah and all they are not that's the point that uh, i'm trying to make that of course it must be included so but uh, they're not coming up i mean uh, that's the this entire uh Bhadralok flamboyant grandstanding you know uh, about that it's a progressive land i mean i can take the responsibility of bengal this this whole flamboyant Bhadralo grandstanding, uh, you know, the, the caste based, you know, so let them first come uh, sort of uh, uh, talk about their privilege. That can be a good beginning. So they are not really accepting the the the, the privilege, uh, the caste privilege that they enjoy. Uh, so uh, and uh, 
including coming up with the pedagogical discourse you know for example uh, uh, dalit studies and others it it is already there uh, uh, you know professor thorad when he was the chairman of the ugc he established centers for social inclusion and as uh, and uh, the studies of social i mean center for social inclusion and uh, exclusion you know centers in in various central universities so but then what has happened that uh, that also of course brought in lot of uh, discussions and uh, research uh, academic papers but then of course uh, now again it has sort of died down but uh, yes uh, i think we need to get rid of this uh, uh, the savarna gauge you know as a lens to understand uh, this uh, the whole uh, dalit pain if i can say or dalit humiliation so what we need to do is that we can also uh, uh, have a you know the, you know we can really need to talk about i mean we need to really talk about the caste privilege of the of of the uh, upper caste bhadra lok so this this flamboyant academic grandstanding will not really work to really empower you know marginalized castes i think we have gone past uh, 6:30 and the discussion can go on and on but uh, it's time to uh, wrap up this talk and i would like to thank professor noshkor uh, being here giving such an important and enriching discussion and a talk about bengal politics especially when the elections are just uh, happening uh, in bengal so we would like to thank you uh, professor noshkor for joining us today in this hss jss seminar series um, yeah and here we end the talk um, um, ambika ma'am uh, should we end the talk now No, no. Uh, I think uh, the talk is formally closed, but I would like to uh, interact with. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Oh, thank you. Uh, very, very. I think it was very, very nice talk. So, and uh, if you happen to come to Gujarat, you know, once things are normal, it will be nice to yeah. come to the campus. Our students and all of us will be very. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much for inviting me, uh, Dr. Ayadurai, and. Uh, thanks everyone for for being there camellia prashant dotona and others thank you